They deserve that little bit of a break. It's like trying to feed someone who's asleep. You want your plants to root, not rot, so. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma and today I'm gonna to be talking all about how to winter proof your house plants. It's probably not a surprise that winter is a little bit harder for house plants. Days are shorter, there's not as many hours of sun in the day and even if there is, probably cloudy, especially here in the UK, it is dark. Like 85% of the time I'd say it's cloudy. So plants aren't getting nearly as much light. The air is drier because we've turned on the central heating in our homes. We've brought in our plants from outside that have summered outside. Growing also slows down and so we really need to adjust our plant care in order to keep our plants happy and give them that little bit of well-deserved rest that they deserve after pushing out new growth hard all summer. They deserve that little bit of a break. And because of all these things, their care needs to be adjusted. So that is what I'm gonna be talking about today, talking about how I adjust my plant care to help my plants survive winter. Also, any products that I mention in this video, I will make sure I link down below. So if you wanna use them too, go check them out down there, so. Oh, and before I get into it, I'd like to say if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and comment on other plenty things that you'd like me to talk about and subscribe for more. All right, let's get into it. Because it's cooler and darker, your plants are gonna be growing less rapidly as they would be in spring and summer. And so the amount of water that they can absorb is quite a lot less. So we don't need to be watering them nearly as frequently. Also keeping the soil too moist can lead to root rot and death, which is not ideal. We don't want our plants to die over winter. That's like the goal. We want to keep everyone living happily and not rotting. <laughs> so watering less is pretty important. So instead of like in the summer and spring when you might be watering weekly because your plant is absorbing it super fast. In the autumn and winter, you might need to reduce your watering quite a lot, maybe even every two weeks, maybe even less. And so instead of guessing when my plant needs water and trying to stick to a rigid, hard and fast, every two weeks I'm gonna give my plant water schedule because that might be too much for them, I really, really, really rely on my moisture meter during the autumn and winter because I can use it to get deep down into the soil and test whether or not it's still wet. And especially because the air is drier, the topsoil of our plants can dry out quite quickly comparatively. And so that's not necessarily a good indicator that our plants need water. So I pretty much only water when the plants land in the dry zone on this moisture meter. And that really helps me make sure that I'm not giving plants more water if they're still sitting in wet soil, because that is probably one of the worst things you can do. It's also really important for you to use room temperature water when you're watering your plants. In the winter, the water coming straight from my cold tap is freezing, like too cold for me to keep my hands under for a prolonged period of time. And so that means it's probably too cold for your plant's roots and it could shock them and would really not be nice for your plant. So I tend to water with like lukewarm room temperature -ish water. I wait until the temperature feels comfortable for my hands to not be too hot and not be too cold. You wouldn't want to water with hot water either. So a good middle ground lukewarm room temperature water is ideal for your plant's roots. Another really important thing that I think about in the winter months is light. The sun is not out for nearly as much time of the day as cloudy and the sun might even be at a different angle. And that might mean you need to adjust where your plants live in order to give them adequate light. This means that you might need to move some of your plants closer to the windows of your home, especially if they get early morning sun or they're north or east facing the light that you're getting through those windows is a lot less likely to burn your plants in the autumn and winter than it is in the summer because the sun just isn't quite as harsh. But if you do move plants right up next to your windows, you wanna make sure that they're not touching the windows because your windows get quite cold, especially at night, and that can really put stress on the leaves of your plant. So it's better just not let them touch windows because it's not good for them, so don't let them do that. If you can't provide enough adequate light for your plants or you have too many plants like I do and can't possibly give all of them a prime spot 
up right up next to the window then you might need to supplement the light that they're getting with grow lights i personally use two different type of grow lights i have these ones here they just clamp on to my shelves and it has two adjustable led lights so i just clamp it onto the shelves and then point the lights in the direction of my plants and that gives them a good amount of light i also have some fluorescent bar lights on my plant shelf and in my ikea cabinet those are really good for giving a closer amount of light for my smaller plants i can provide them with a little bit more that way and i think they like it but i'm not keeping these lights on all day like i said i use it to supplement the light that my plants are getting i have mine all automatically set up with a smart power strip so they go on automatically at about 4 p.m and they stay on until 9 so they're getting a good five hours of this boosted light also it's really important that you dust your leaves regularly throughout the winter because the dust can clog your leaves pores and also block them from photosynthesizing so it won't let the plant collect as much light as it needs so make sure that you are dusting your plant's leaves regularly throughout the autumn winter period and i mean throughout all time but especially during the autumn winter period keep them clean and nice and being able to do the best leaf job they can although the temperature drops quite a lot outside during the winter Inside our homes, it doesn't tend to drop quite as much, so it's not a super big important thing that you might have to change. And typically, if you're comfortable in your home, then your plants are comfortable in your home, so it's not something that you need to worry about too much. But you wanna make sure that the temperature isn't getting below about 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit, because after that, it is really too cold for your plants and you could damage them by letting them get too cold and they won't be very happy with you for that. So try not to let it get below 10 or 50 and it should be okay. It is important to note though that you should try to keep your plants away from hot and cold drafts. So if you're opening a window and it's cold outside or if you've got one of those fan heaters that's blowing around, probably not best to like point it at your plants or let your plants get in the way of that because they don't like big fluctuations in temperature that those cause so just keep them away from hot and cold vents and you should be okay also if you have your radiators on or you like candles or anything make sure you don't keep your plants too close to that and they don't touch the radiators because those can burn your leaves and create permanent damage and we don't want to do that. We do not want to scorch our plants because we like our plants. So better not to burn them. So like I've mentioned a couple of times, because of central heating, the air in our homes is a lot drier, like a lot drier than in the summer. So you might need to do some things to boost the humidity in your house to make it more comfortable for your plants. There's a couple ways you can do this. Probably the easiest way, though it does cost a little bit of money, is get a humidifier. You can get small ones for not very much money or big ones for a lot more, but they cover more area. So it really depends on your specific needs, what humidifier you would want. I have two that I use regularly. I have this little small one that I keep in my IKEA cabinet that I use for the plant in there. That's just from Amazon. I think it's an H2O humidifier. And if I fill it up once, it'll last all day if it's on consistently, but I don't leave it on consistently all that much. And my other humidifier that I use for the majority of my plants is my Elec Home, Elec Homes, Elec Homes, Elec Homes humidifier. And that's like a more big, five liter humidifier that covers a lot more area. That one has a humidity sensor in it. And so I typically set that so the humidity is around 65 or 70. And it kind of maintains that humidity in my room for as long as it can. If you don't wanna get a humidifier, there's a few things you can do to help supplement. You can group your plants together. I tend to do that as well. My plants try, usually stay in groups and they make little, zones of humidity for themselves which is awesome you could also set out pebble trays where you get like a tray and you have to have some pebbles and you just put a little bit of water in that not loads but some 
and put that by your plants and the heat in the air will make the water evaporate and create humidity for your plants, which is super cool. You wanna be trying to keep the humidity in your home at least above 40 or 50%, but for most more tropical plants, you might wanna be trying to keep it as high as 60 or 70% in order to keep them happy. That's what I try and keep mine as, cause I have quite a lot of tropical plants, but of course it depends on the plants you have. If you have mostly like succulents and cacti, obviously the humidity needs to be lower than if you have loads of like rainforest plants. So it makes sense. It's worth looking up what your plants need and what their ideal humidity is and trying to stick with that. Mine happens to be a bit higher, so I supplement with a bit more humidifiers. I personally have a couple of these hygrometers throughout the house. They're also a thermometer as well, which is fun. Those just tell me what the humidity and the temperature are in my space. And I just have them dotted about. They're not very expensive off Amazon. And they just tell me what the humidity is. And so I know whether or not I need to be boosting it more or chilling out a bit with it. So yeah. So since our plants aren't growing all that much anymore or producing like nice, big, healthy new growth, they probably don't need much fertilizer anymore, if at all. I basically stop fertilizing my plants in like late September, early October, and I probably won't start again until around March when it's getting lighter and warmer again. And this is just because most plants don't want or need that extra boost of food that you're feeding them. It's like trying to feed someone who's asleep. You wouldn't just like force food down your friend's mouth while they're sleeping, would you? So no, why would you do that with your plants? So don't fertilize over autumn and winter. You just don't need to. The growth of your plants might be slowing. Your leaves might be dropping a little bit more. Just know that that is completely normal for your plants to go into this sort of dormancy or rest period that's okay and fine and normal. It only gets to be a problem if you're losing all of the leaves on all of your plants, then you might have a little bit more cause to be concerned, but a little bit of leaf drop, totally okay. So don't worry about that. Another really important thing is check your plants for pests. A lot of plants like aphids and mealybugs and stuff, they thrive and like reproduce over this winter time. Also, if you're bringing your plants in from outside because it's no longer warm outside so you've brought your plants in you could be bringing pests into your home and we don't want our plants to have pests they eat your plants and we don't want them to eat your plants because we want our plants to be nice and happy and healthy so we don't like pests so it's really 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 important to give your plants a nice thorough check for pests i like to give my plants a quick check for pests about once a week just to see if there's anything up there checking just the tops and undersides of the leaves not like heavily just like a little check i do this at the same time i'm going around with my moisture meter to see if they need water and it's just an easy once a week thing that you can do to just make sure that there's not an infestation in your house and if there is that you can respond quickly before it gets out of hand so it's just easier to check regularly i also like to give my plants a good preventative spray at the beginning of autumn winter and that's just a spray of neem oil solution that i've made for myself just to kill off any pests that are on there already and prevent the leaves from future pest infestations last but certainly not least try and save repotting and propagation for the spring probably won't like big disturbances in their roots at this time of year and they will probably take a bit longer to recover if they recover at all so it's best not to repot your plants during this time that being said if your plant is really really struggling like bursting out of its pot and you desperately need to repot do it but try and be gentle to their roots because if your plant really needs it it needs it and you gotta do it. But if you can possibly wait until spring, that's probably for the best. Also, if you're taking cuttings of your plants now, it is not the ideal time to do that. Especially if you're water propagating, the water will likely be colder just because air temperatures are colder. And this can lead to most cuttings rotting instead of growing roots, which is not ideal. You want your plants to root, not rot, so. 
That was a good one. I just came up with that one on the spot. But if you do insist on propagating, which is totally fine, like I, I do, because I can't stop myself, but you could always get a heat mat just to keep the water a little bit warmer. I don't have one. I've been thinking about getting one to prevent the rotting issue that I just mentioned. Those are good just to help keep them a little bit warmer and give them a better chance of success rather than just sitting in cold water and rotting. So that's it. That's all you need to know about how to adjust your plant care for the winter. It's all pretty easy, nothing too much. Just give your plants that little bit of a break that they so desperately deserve. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, I would love if you gave it a thumbs up down below and comment on other plant things you'd like me to talk about next and subscribe for more. Also, head over to my Instagram because I post on there all the freaking time and you can see my plants constantly. So yeah, go over there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. I really like this new setup. I think it looks quite nice. Very like formal.